I was shocked to see this at Akabu in 2024. PlayStation 2 Holy Grail games. I just couldn't believe my eyes. Hello again folks and welcome back to another live game hunting video and it seems that summer is finally here and we are in the height of car boot season 2024 and this car boot this time does not disappoint. Not only was there an absolutely amazing selection of video games, I also took a gamble on one of the cheapest consoles I've ever picked up and we managed to find some holy grail games. These are games which I never imagined in a million years I'd ever be able to play, let alone own in my collection. Just before we head off to the car, I want to remind you folks, if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and please subscribe. As I put new videos out every Saturday Live at 5, as well as bonus content throughout the week, and I really want you folks along for the ride. And if you want to go above and beyond and support the channel that little bit more, please consider becoming a supporter over on Patreon. It's just a pound a month, you get loads of bonus videos, including even more amazing car boot finds. Here we go then, Sunday morning at Arming Hall car boot. And like I said at the start of this video, we were at the height of summer, but the day before the car boot, it rained all day. And I think that put a lot of people off. So you can see it's a little bit quieter than normal here, but hopefully that will work to our advantage. So straight away, I found these PlayStation 2 and PlayStation 3 games. I was tempted by the Watch Dogs Essential game, but I did pass on that today. But hiding underneath it was a game, which is worth picking up because I can flip it into CEX for some decent credit. Need for Speed Underground 2. If I can grab this cheap, it's definitely worth picking it up. How much did you say this one was? Over my years of hunting at car boots, I have developed a pretty keen eye when it comes to game hunting. And I knew there was going to be a game hiding in this brown paper bag here. And I saw this game, Call of Duty World at War. This is always worth picking up, flipping into CX. But unfortunately, I think you can even see the ring in this video. This one was scratched beyond all repair, so I did leave it behind. But it shows the importance of always, always, always checking the discs. Next up, we had a shop clearance stall, and there was a lot of interesting bits on here, but nearly everything came with a but. So that controller was pretty cool, but it did like half the parts have been replaced and or broken over time, such as this controller here, which was only 50p, but somebody had cut the wire, and a lot of these discs were unfortunately scratched. That's why I'm passing on a lot of these. Except for the Red Dead games, these were in pretty good condition, but here's the thing. Of course, I already have these in the collection, and unfortunately for the price, they weren't worth picking up to flip into CX but pretty cool to see especially this many copies of Red Dead at car boot. Like I said I developed a keen eye for game hunting over the years and I could see these games from a mile off. Selection of Xbox One and Xbox 360 games here but unfortunately even though there was some pretty decent titles in here these are all games I already had in the collection all that didn't trade into CEX for very much money at all so I did pass on these. But a few stalls down I found this little bundle of PlayStation 4 games and Fallout 4 is a game which is trading in for some pretty decent money at the moment and Borderlands a handsome collection mark my words in the next few months the value of this one is going to go up trust me on that one Next up, we have some which I'm seeing all of the time in summer 2024. These kind of generic TikTok handheld consoles, which I generally presume are all terrible. So I always pass them a little further down. We had a little stack of Wii games. Now, with a majority of Wii games, they're either shovelware or I already have them in the collection. Or they're just not worth trading into CEX. The Just Dance games can be decent credit, but only if you can get them cheap enough. But it's always worth checking some of the more random tiles, as some of them may well surprise you. So you do those two for three pounds? So unfortunately I had no luck with the Wii games but maybe I'll have a little bit more luck here. So I presume this was like a house clearance stall and at the corner of my eye I saw this Xbox 360. Now my wife wondered what I was looking at here as this was just a bag of seemingly rubbish on first looks but it did seem there was an Xbox 360 console in here with some games and a large amount of controllers. And here's the thing, in 2024, I am taking more chances when it comes to picking up not just consoles, but also controllers. And as soon as I saw not one, but two copies of Call of Duty Black Ops, I knew if I could get this cheap, it was worth taking a gamble. I was shocked when I found out how much the seller wanted for that Xbox 360 bundle. Just four pounds. And for four pounds, yes, I'm going to take the risk. Yes, it was dirty. Yes, it was smelly. But for four pounds, 
you've got to roll a dice and take a chance, but stick around till the end of the video to see if that gamble as such pays off. I know it's not the biggest gamble of all time for £4, but sometimes it's these low stakes gambles that really pay off the most. And here we have some, back to the car boot, here we have some absolutely incredible Pokemon strategy guides. I did pass because honestly, I'm just running out of space for these. Some really good N64 carts here as well. I'm really starting to think I need to pick up more N64 carts. It just seems a lot of people aren't collecting as much for the N64 at the moment. And honestly, it seems to be getting cheaper. So I'm going to take full advantage. Now, here we have some for which I've wanted for my collection for absolutely years. These Star Wars Episode 1, I think they're money banks but they're also musical they dual but unfortunately they didn't have batteries i couldn't tell if they were working or not they looked a bit rough so i did pass on these ones heading on we found some really nice vhs tapes and i keep getting tempted folks i keep getting tempted to get back into vhs collecting but i have to keep reminding myself i do not have the room to start a brand new collection regardless of how much i love the look and the kind of feel of VHS tapes. But one thing that keeps putting me off is coming up in a moment. No, it's not Star Wars Episode 1, which seems to be a bit of a theme this episode. I actually really enjoy that film. It's this right here, tapes that go mouldy. I just want to pause here and talk about this before we get into the main footage. This is what I caught out of the corner of my eye, sat on a table at a car boot in 2024, and I was in shock. I could not believe what I was seeing. Four of the rarest Holy Grail games ever released for the PlayStation 2. But of course, on closer inspection, these are copies, fakes, repros, whatever you want to call them. But it's got me thinking. If I want to play these four games, it would cost me around a thousand pounds. And this got me thinking once again. It's not very often I play games via emulation. I like to play the original game from a disc on the original hardware. But here's the thing. Yes, these are repros, but it does mean I can play the game off a disc on the original hardware. And I thought at the end of the day, for the price, when am I ever going to get the opportunity to play some of these games ever again without paying hundreds and hundreds of pounds so i decided for today i'm going to pick two of these games up and the memory card needed to play these off the original console so i can finally play these games back to more traditional car boot hunting grounds and we have the box of dvds and games and hiding in the bottom here was a couple of psp games but unfortunately were fifa titles so i did decide to pass on these even though it's getting less and less common to see psp games at the car boot next up we had a very fetching punisher t-shirt which i was very tempted to pick up it was xl but it seemed like it wasn't very long which I know sounds strange, but it felt like it might cut off at the midriff, so I did pass on this one. Even though I'm a massive fan of the Punisher, I think they're asking about one or two pounds. But even though it's summer, I don't think it's time for me to be wearing a crop top. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Car boots are a fantastic place to pick up vintage Levi's jeans. You can normally get them much cheaper at the car boot than you could do on eBay. But unfortunately today, none of these were in my size, which was a real shame. There were some really nice jeans here, but trust me, don't pass on these. Now, here's something you don't see every day at the car boot, a boxed Atari Woody console. Now, I do already have one of these in the collection. If not, for the condition, I could have been tempted with this one. It had a couple of games. It was, of course, boxed and complete. But they were asking £80 on this one. But let me know in the comments down below if you would have picked up this beautiful Atari console. Next up, we have some PC big box games. Now, I was actually really tempted by these, even though they were FIFA and NHL games, just because I have such fond memories of playing FIFA Soccer 96 and FIFA 98 on the PC. One of my friends at the time had a really, really good for the time gaming PC and this is the first way I played these games but just because they weren't the greatest titles, I did decide to pass. Heading on, I found a couple of bits here which were pretty cool. A Sabrina comic for my wife and... I'm a sucker for anything Peacemaker. Yes, it's a Funko Pop but if I can get this cheap, I'm going to grab it. How about your... Sabrina book and pop here. Um, 
Spoiler alert, I did pick up the Funko Pop for just £3. Couple of Xbox 360 games here, nothing to write home about, but it's always worth checking, as in this box of DVDs here, I found a copy of Call of Duty World War II, and again, if I can pick this up cheap, this is a very easy flip into CX. £3 in-store credit, how much do we have to pay? How much is that one, please? Next up was a stall of fellow collector Console 77, who I will link in the description down below. And I could not believe the condition of this Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles game right here. I've seen this before, but never in this complete condition. It had absolutely everything. He was asking £10 for this one. The box was a bit rough, but for the condition and the contents, it was well worth the £10. But that's not all he had for sale. He had some absolutely incredible bits from his collection, mainly doubles that he was selling so he can buy even more amazing bits for his collection, which is a great way to build a collection. I was very tempted by the Super Famicom controller because I couldn't remember if I actually had a second controller for the SNES. And honestly, I just kind of forgot to pick this one up we were talking for ages whilst i was browsing his stock and there were some absolutely awesome bits here a really good selection of kind of the really retro from tape based games up to like wii games but mainly 8-bit games and some really nice mega drive games and this game i was sorely missing from my collection the ea sports double header unfortunately it did have the manual so i did pass on that one so that's a interesting i've never seen a commodore game like that before Disc. That's it? Yeah. Oh wow. I like how they still have the same kind of tape bits in there, but just put the yeah, disc in. <laughs> Like I said then, Console 77 always has an absolutely amazing selection of cassette based games and I nearly always pick a couple of these up. They're normally around a pound each and some of the artwork on these is absolutely amazing. And normally when it comes to deciding which games to pick up, my wife has an uncanny talent for picking up the best games. Next up we have some toys and first off this bundle of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles figures. It was a bit strange as I think these were kind of older figures with a newer van. I wasn't quite sure. I couldn't really see the contents of this bundle. I think they were asking £15, so I did decide to pass on this one. But next up, we hit the mother load of Star Wars toys. Now, a lot of these toys were more modern, a lot of the retro series, which I really like. I kind of like the way they've re-released classic Star Wars figures and also figures from some of the newer series in like this retro way. It's super, super cool to see. Next up, we have an Xbox 360 bundle and I could be tempted to pick up this bundle of games along with a console if I can get it at the right price. So let's find out what the price is. Are you selling it all together? Yeah. How much are you looking for? 30. We were asking a little bit more, but dropped it down a bit. So the seller did offer to sell this to me at £25 after a while, but I did decide to pass just because there was a lot of games here that I already had in my collection that just wouldn't flip into CEX very well. I did, of course, try and pick up some of the games separately, but they stood their ground. They wanted to sell it as a bundle, which I respect, so I did pass. We're coming to the end of this absolutely amazing car boot, but there's still games left to see. So first off, we had these Xbox One games, but they were asking £5 for each of these games. I was tempted by Skyrim, but I did pass this time couple of stalls left and this stall just had a very very random selection of games we're talking just a little bit of everything including this barbar plushy i think it is correct me if i'm wrong in the comments down below but nothing i really really needed here but just this is the kind of thing i love at the car boots just going through these random assortments of games because you never know what you're going to find i was quite tempted by this halo 4 strategy guide but again i am very much running out of space for strategy guides one of the last finds of the day here continuing the theme of star wars episode one this star wars pod racer wake up system which essentially i think is a posh way of saying alarm clock unfortunately i couldn't test it the box was a little bit bashed so i did decide to pass on this one but the nostalgia is real what an amazing morning it had been at Arming Hall Car Boot, and I'd be able to play two games for the PlayStation 2 that I never imagined I'd be able to experience. But the question is on everyone's lips, will the Xbox 360 work? Let's take it back to the games room.
Here we are then back in the games room from an absolutely amazing car boom. We have a lot to talk about and we'll be finding out if my gamble paid off with that Xbox 360 console. But first things first, we're going to start with somewhat of a fail. So at the start of the car boom, I picked up this copy of Need for Speed Underground 2 for just £2. Now here's the thing, this actually sells in CEX for £12. They only give you £4 trade-in, so it's not the worst deal in the world. I'm still doubling my money, but unfortunately I checked the disc but not carefully enough because this is the NTSC version of this game. So unfortunately, I can't trade this into CEX. I very much doubt it's going to sell on eBay. So unfortunately, this one was a bit of a fail. But enough of the fails, let's get into some wins. Next up, I picked up these two PlayStation 4 games for just £2 each. So first off, we have Fallout 4, which trades into CEX for £8 at the moment. Yes, this is still commanding £8 of in-store credit, so definitely one to keep an eye out for. And then the second game I picked up is Borderlands The Handsome Collection. Now, here's the thing. I'm going to hold on to this game for a little bit longer. The Borderlands movie comes out in cinemas very, very soon. And I expect when that happens, the price of this one is going to absolutely spike. So I'm going to sit on this one for the next few weeks. Another nice little CEX flip late on in the car, but it was this game right here, Call of Duty World War II. Pick this one up for just a quid, it trades in for £3 in-store credit, nice and easy. But with Call of Duty, it's always worth keeping an eye on the prices, as with no other game franchise, the Call of Duty games fluctuate in value all of the time, so make sure you're on it with your CEX prices. I don't know why this keeps happening. I keep telling myself it's not going to, I don't need them, I need to stop picking them up. But once again, I've picked up another Funko Pop, but this Peacemaker one from the Suicide Squad movie is absolutely incredible. It's one of my favourite characters in DC. John Cena's betrayal of Peacemaker is absolutely incredible. And for three quid, I just needed to pick this up for some reason. I don't know what it is. I think I have a real problem with these Funko Pops. Somebody please help me. Next up, we have a couple of cassette-based games, which I picked up off fellow reseller and collector, Console77. Go and give him a follow over on Facebook. He's at Arming Hall all the time and has some amazing, amazing bits for sale, especially if you're into your cassette-based games. So when we pick up cassette-based games from Console77, it's normally my wife which will pick up the random cassettes. That's because most of them are priced at just a pound, and she literally judges them by the cover and picks them up, such as this game right here, Werewolves of London, because... That artwork is absolutely incredible. My wife has a real uncanny ability to pick up the best cassette-based games, but more about that in a minute. So I picked up this game right here, Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles for the Spectrum. Now, on the outside, this one does look a little bit rough, but much like myself, on the outside, I look a little bit rough. It's what's on the inside that counts, again, much like myself, because... The contents of this are absolutely complete. It has the Panini stickers, the Turtles tattoos and the Turtles postcard. And I was happy to pay the £10 for this one because to find this game complete all these years later is an absolutely amazing find. Like I said then, my wife has an uncanny ability when it comes to picking up cassette-based games. So she disappeared for a while at the car boot and came back with this one. I didn't catch it on video. She picked up this game right here, Onslaught. Once again, because the artwork is absolute fire. I think she paid either 50p or a pound for this one. And this sells on eBay for about £15. Like I said, she has an uncanny ability to always pick up the very best cassette-based games. We have waited long enough. Let's get into the big questions. The Xbox 360 console, which I picked up for just £4. Yes, it was rough, but the main question is, does it work? Well, first things first, let's talk about the games. At first, when I found these at the car boot, I was like, well, regardless, I'm fine. I have these games. They didn't look too bad in the sun at the car boot. But I got them home and they were scratched beyond any form of repair. And not even that, they smelt bad. I think this console must have been stored in a garage or a shed or somewhere. It had damp, it smelt. And honestly, there was only one place those games were going and that was straight in the bin. But what about the console? You are not going to believe this. Here it is then, the Xbox 360 Elite console, which I picked up at a car boot for £4. And when I picked it up, this thing was in rough shape and honestly, a little bit smelly. But here's the thing, 
I have taken more risks this year at the car boots than ever before. And I can't believe I'm saying this. The risk has paid off. This thing works. It's unbelievable. The state this console is in was absolutely disgusting. And you can see, I've even cleaned up these controllers. These controllers look fairly good now. Yes, the thumbsticks are a little bit rough, but they work. I'm kind of in love with this console, just due to the fact it was so wrecked, but it still works. And here's the thing, I paid four pounds for this console. I can trade the console and a controller into CEX for 40 pounds in-store credit. That is 10 times my money. So it just goes to show it is worth taking a risk because honestly, for four pounds, what you got to lose? Which brings us on to our final pickup this time. And yes, let's address the elephant in the room. These are not real games. These are fake games. But here is the thing. For me, as I've said for the past four years, keep playing the game. And these are two games I've always wanted to play. And I don't do a lot of emulation. If I play a game, I like to play it from the original disc. But sometimes that can be incredibly expensive. Take Silent Hill Shattered Memories. A copy of this game will easily set you back over £200. And as before, we think about Rule of Rose. This is a £500 PlayStation 2 game. To be able to just play both of these games would cost me £700. So yes, I do not feel bad about picking up these games from the car boot for just five pounds each because at the end of the day these are two games which I've always wanted to play and honestly I never believed I'd be able to play these games ever just because of the price and here is one of the things I really dislike about retro game collecting as such some of the pricing can make games like this games that I'd love to play out of my reach I would never be able to afford to pay for these games. And honestly, sometimes I wonder, would I want to pay £500 for a single game? It's a really difficult topic of conversation. I want to continue this conversation down in the comments below. But for now, after all these years, I finally get to play Silent Hill Shattered Memories. Here we go then, let's try out this PlayStation 2 mod. So I've been scared of modding my console in the past, but this is the simplest mod I've ever used. You literally just plug the memory card into slot one and you are good to go. It boots up McBoot and you can play copy discs on your PlayStation 2 console, because that's what it's all about for me, being able to play these games on the original hardware. And I've strayed away from emulation in the past because it just doesn't feel right. But this is the game on a disc with the original hardware. The way this game was intended to be played, but for an absolute minuscule amount of the price it would cost today to buy a copy of this game. And for me, at the end of the day, like I've said, that is what it's all about. Playing these games. I, would, I respect collectors who are happy to pay the premium price for these games. But for me, I just want to be able to play it and this way I can play these games for a small percentage of that price. And I'm very, very excited to jump into this game, which I've waited absolutely years to be able to experience. There we have it then, folks. What an amazing car boot that was. I managed to add some amazing bits to my collection. I managed to build up a little bit of CEX credit. I managed to gamble and win on the cheapest console I've ever picked up from anywhere. And not only that, I've managed to play two games which I never in my wildest dream thought I'd ever, ever be able to play. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like button, subscribe, and as always, keep playing the game. See you soon.